If you're an individual who God has placed upon your, upon your spirit to do thus and so, I don't care if it's preach, teach, direct, lead songs, praise, dance, usher, clean the church, whatever. If you find yourself in a situation where you continuously, for one stupid reason after another, do not get to go forth, we do not want your hope to defer, be deferred because it will make your heart sick. Ask the Lord to lead you to a church that you can work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you for returning. commonly known as TV on. Welcome to There's Nothing Like Church Folk. Now, I wanted to illustrate to you all the effects of jealousy. And Pastor, you just, oh my God. <coughs> we, we, we say at our church that Pastor got uh, little microphones in our cars and he's hearing our conversations because he always somehow over the pulpit, say something that we've been talking about in our cars, but it's like you said, it's the Holy Spirit. Our pastor is in tune with the Holy Ghost, and I'm thankful for that. Pastor just talked about this Wednesday. Let me tell you what jealousy will do. Cain was jealous of Abel. You just talked about it. Just talked about it Wednesday. What happened? Because they're jealousy. Yeah. Say it. Y'all can say it. Kill them. You could be so jealous of a person that you'll kill them. Yeah. How, and how about in our churches, you know, you know, we're, we're kind of scared of the laws and the police. I may not just outright shoot you, Jackie, but what about killing you with my mouth? Mm -hmm. Bible talks about that. And then, you, and then you stand before the Lord and say, well, Lord, Lord, I ain't killed nobody. Yeah, but you, you killed with your tongue. Mm -hmm. As far as parts is concerned, Carolyn, that's murder. I might not be red bleeding, physical red blood, but shoot, sure, it might as well be. Cain was jealous of Abel, that led to murder. Saul was jealous of David because Saul lost his anointing. If you don't do what God tells you after a while, don't be surprised if the anointing leaves you. Can I just put it like that, Pastor? It's okay just put it like that? If we just get to a point, we're going to serve God on our terms, we're going to do it the way we want to do it, and at some point, if we just refuse to do how God wants to do, is it safe to say that just maybe the anointing may just leave us and go right. to somebody else? Is, right. is that safe to say? Mm -hmm. All right. So I don't want the anointing to leave me, Demarcus, because I've gone through hell for this anointing. Amen. And we've all gone through hell for the anointing that's in our lives. Amen. I tell people, you don't just wake up and decide to be anointed, Carolyn. It's a high price. It's a high price to pay for the anointing. You don't just wake up and say, you know what, I'm bored to death. I feel like being anointed. No, it don't happen like that, right? You look back over your lives. Y'all gone through something to be where you at now and do what you do now. All right? Amen. Amen. Come on. Joseph's brothers. <coughs> now, I kind of fought the father just a tad bit because I'm a parent. He had, what, 11 kids? Was 11 of them passed or 12? Okay. If you got 12 kids, if you can't afford to give all 12 of your kids a coat of many colors, it was 10? Okay. If you can't afford to give all parents, I'm talking to all the parents and all those that just know about parenting. Y'all know good and well, if we can't give all 10 of our kids a coat of many colors, you sure don't just give one. So, Joseph... First lady, in my opinion, was kind of set up for the brothers to hate. Now, that don't justify the brothers. But he was the, Joseph was the only one that got the coat of many colors. And what the brothers do? Throw him in the pit. That's what jealousy will do, Pastor. My kids can tell you, and I got one of them here on camera. My cameraman, Mr. Todd. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. All four of my kids can tell you, Mama was the type. 
If she couldn't get everybody McDonald's, but nobody get McDonald's. Or if I couldn't take that one sandwich and split it a thousand different ways, and we always had other people's kids, and I might have 15, 20, well, you know, I work with the youth choir, we had about 30. 26, 30, yeah, about 30 kids <laughs> stay in the weekend at the house. See, he's right. So that I could take them back and forth to choir rehearsal, so they take them back and forth to church. Triple you said to make two or three trips. Uh -huh. And uh, about 1% of the time, the parents might would give money for those kids. Usually I was coming out of pocket. So if I couldn't afford for everybody to get a cheeseburger, 99 cent cheeseburger, when nobody get a cheeseburger. But jealousy, this is what jealousy will do. Cain was jealous enough to kill Abel. Saul, was, Saul attempted to kill David, even though David had a couple opportunities twice. He didn't need to kill Saul, but he didn't. Joseph's brother was so jealous of uh, Joseph that they threw him in the pit. And then what about the chief officers? They the, the with Daniel. These top men, look, here we go, leadership. And I'm going to be dealing with leadership in just a moment. I'm hard on leadership. Because I'm going to be honest with y'all, the lay people usually, and what I mean by lay people, people that are just not necessarily in leadership. You come to church, you regular member, but you're just not necessarily in leadership, but you're just you're a member of the church. Usually about the most stuff that goes on among lay people is jealousy. But the hell and the crap and the mess usually is among the leadership. It's among the leadership. So we got the chief officers. All these that were high up there, right up under King Darius, I believe. Up there with Daniel. But because they were jealous, here we go, of the anointing in Daniel's life, they tricked the king. See, this is why the king wasn't prayed up. I bet you we couldn't trick pastor into praying to some God other than the true and living God. Amen. How about that? Amen. Amen. I bet you we couldn't. You know why? Because he stayed prayed up. He in tune with God. He has a relationship with Christ. So these officers tricked the king, but see, that's why when you got pride, if, if Darius didn't have that pride in his heart, he could have been tricked in that way. To get him to create a law. Now, I've experienced this, you all, with the council. I won't say where or when, but with the council, they actually created a law to keep me from directing. They created a law. And as all those that, that stand in favor against it, me and my first husband, we were the only ones that stood. Everybody else stayed seated. And these were representative over several states and cities. Am I still directed? Amen. You can't stop God's plan Amen. for someone's life. Amen. Know that, all of you. No one can stop God's plan for your life. Amen. Trick King Darius into creating a law that said basically you had to... Uh, not pray to your God. I think uh, were they supposed to pay tribute to him or something? Or old king live forever and bow down concerning the king, right? And then if you pray to anybody other than the king, you just look at thrown in the lion's den. This is what jealousy will do. This is why it's so unnecessary among us. We don't the things I would do to Jack if I was jealous of her. The things I would come up with in my mind. Well, we know how that story ended. Uh Daniel got thrown into the lion's den, but uh, God shot, shut the, the mouths of the, the lions. And those same people that plotted, that's why they say the ditch you dig will be the one you fall into. Because those same officers, leadership, that set that trap for Daniel to be eaten up, the Bible said, hey, Pastor, tell me if I'm wrong, that the, the king, once he realized with a big sigh of relief, that Daniel was okay because he was so sorrowful that he had even made that law because it was all just to get Daniel eaten up by lions. Does not the Bible say that the king had those people that set that trap for him thrown into the lion's den and that before their bodies even hit the ground, the lions had jumped up to meet them and eat them up. Wow. Is that the word, Amen. Pastor? Okay. <laughs> Try to stay in the book. So, in the profile of what I feel to be the majority of church folk, we got people with sick hearts because their hope has been deferred. They're not doing the things God has put in their spirit to do, um, sometimes out of not giving the opportunity. Now, I'm talking about those of you, God has told you to do something, you're scared, and you don't want to do it. That's on you. That's on you. But I'm talking about one, two, 
Your hope is deferred because you're hoping to do this thing and you're not getting that opportunity repeatedly. All right. And the other kind of hurting people we have in our churches a lot are jealous Christians who don't know who they are in God. Because when you know who you are in God, I, I'm a choir director. But so is a bunch of other people. What they got to do with me? I called Jackie the man. Jackie ain't come up here and direct. I only got 15 hands. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come up here and, and direct this jacket. She full of life and energy. Does that take away from me? No. Because there's only one Terry. Because like there's only one Jackie. We got to know who we are in Christ. Is there jealousy among the leaders? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I wrote big time. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, give him all the head clap. That's the first lady said this for me. I got a witness. Man, do you say this for me? I want the folks out there at TV Land or out here in the congregation. Do I not have written those words big time? Mama. Okay. You okay? So you you confirm that I have this written? Okay. All right. <laughs> Chest all stuck out now. <laughs> big time is exactly what I have written in this book. <laughs> so. I, I've told y'all some experience I've experienced. I know that y'all can tell me some stuff of what y'all experienced <coughs> at the hands of leaders because they were jealous. So, some real solutions. How do we become a healthy church? If we got all this going on in church, we got folks that are not getting to do what God's putting their spirit to do. So, they're sitting in the church, heart just as sick, Heart's just as sick. And when you're around a person with a sick heart, that is not a good situation at all. That is not a good situation. And then we got other folks that's jealous. So, how do we become a healthy church? Let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all think we can reduce or eliminate church hurt pretty much all together? I think we can. That's right. If, if, if y'all think we can, say so. Why not? Why not? Talk to me, somebody. Talk loud. Everyone has their own opinion and do what they want to do. <laughs> Back to what I said about serving God on their own terms and doing what they want to do. What if we would do what the Word says? What if? What if? What if? <coughs> but, County, you are absolutely right because people have their own opinions. <laughs> Pastor, which is usually not based on the Word of God. It's based on their experiences and based on what they think and what they see and what they feel. And y'all, what I'm learning to do, even as a preacher, I'm learning to get into agreement with God Amen. and let my opinion match what he say and not just Terry's opinion, just because Terry thinks she knows something. Who cares about that? Who cares? When has Terry's opinion helped anybody? It's the word that brings forth the anointing. It's the word that destroys the yoke. Terry ain't died on the cross for nobody. And if someone come my direction with a cross and a hammer and some nails, I'm going to hit them. Yes, I said on TV. I'm going to hit you upside the head with that hammer. Because <laughs> I'm not dying on the cross for nobody. And I'm not even qualified to. Amen? Amen? So, since we've established, Pastor, that ain't none of us going to die for no one, why don't we go with the word of the one that actually did die? Amen. And if we would do things like that, I think we can pretty much reduce, if not eliminate altogether, church hurt. I really believe it. I really believe that. So how? I say first, we got to be healthy. First, we got to be healthy. And, and, I, and I'm wrapping, I'm, I'm coming to a close with all this. I'm bringing all this home. I like setting the foundation. Because, I, like Pastor said, and thank you so much for saying that, Pastor, I like to deal with stuff we don't really deal with yeah. in our churches because Amen. this is where we live on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Sometimes hourly basis. <laughs> okay, so first of all, we got to be healthy. Jackie, if you want to have a healthy church, let it start with you. Amen. All day long. All day long. All day long. So let me, let me, let me give you... Uh, Three examples of how to correct the wrong thinking and have a right thinking. Let's say, for example, someone hurts your feelings. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got all kinds of scripture. Pastor, we do not have the time. We will not do it this conference. 
go into all this scripture. But those of you, when you have an opportunity, and you can at least turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I wrote down verses 4 through 8a. I am not going to read all those verses. And you can also look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 27. And I'm not going to read all those verses either. But turn with me just for a moment so I can hit and miss some of those. Because I want to make sure you have word. I want to make sure you have word. So that when you turn this show off and you have to deal with someone hurting your feelings, you know what to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. <laughs> hit and miss, hit and miss, hit and miss, hit and miss. First of all, it talks about the type of love we need to have for one another. First of all, Pastor, it's time for us to grow up. Amen. Well, she didn't look at me today, so I ain't going to church for the next three weeks. Grow up. Mary, please do the sign for grow up. Grow up. Yeah. We got grow up. We've been on milk. Some of us have been in church 20 and 30 years, and we ain't got off the milk yet. We're still similar and infamil. Demarcus, we can't even eat our own greens and beans and meat. We're still on infamil and similar. Been in church 20 and 30 years. This is what I'm talking about. The majority of us in the body of Christ know of God but don't know him. We're still on milk. God forbid should someone look at us wrong, say it's the wrong thing to us. We are done. It's a wrap, Jackie. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Love is kind. It's not jealous. You know? It's not easily provoked. We got to be the kind of Christians that learn not to be so. And, and I'm talking to me, y'all. I'm looking right in the camera. I'm looking at me. Not so easily offended. Love is not so easily offended. I had left Pastor a message. Uh, about something, and he didn't call me back right away. And I was like, Pastor, I know you love me. I was like, what? Pastor called me. Uh, and you know, I was teasing him. I, I, was, I wasn't upset at all, nothing like that. I, I was teasing him. Because I do know he, he loves us. He loves all of us. But do you know there are some folks that would be mad with Pastor or First Lady Carolyn if, he, if they didn't call him back right away? Well, I thought you would. You see what I'm saying? We got to grow up and not be so easily offended, so easily provoked. Easily. It just, let's, how about give one, each other the benefit of the doubt? Mm -hmm. The pastor didn't call me back, but maybe it was for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he got a life. Like, a he wife. got a wife. Like, he got kids. Mm -hmm. Like, he works a job full time. Like, I ain't the only member of his church. Sure. Like, I mean, the list go on and on and on. But you'd be surprised, Carolyn, I've seen people leave a church because they said the pastor ignored them and did not look at them. And they left the house of God. So read through all that. The Bible said love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. Okay, but that's another conference. Um, if you go back a chapter to chapter 12, man... Verses 4 through 27, I am not going to read all of this. Amen. That's too many verses. Amen. However, however, this is the point I want to make in that chapter. The Bible said we're all part of one body. And I'm, I'm addressing all of the body of Christ all across the world. We are all part of the body. The baby toe cannot say that um, to the hand that... We don't need the hand, we just need the toe. Or the head can't say, well, we don't need the nose, we need the eyes, but we don't need the nose. And the nose can't say, well, knee, we don't need you to bend, even though the reason I'm able to stand up because my knees would unbend and I can sit myself back down because my knees bend. So how dare my tongue say we have no need of the knee? How dare my foot say we have no need of the hand? All these big hands, I'm always moving them. I'm probably throwing something at the devil. Shoot. Need the hands. Can't say the hands not important. Can't say the baby fingers not important. Can't say the nostrils not important. What am I saying? We are all part of the body of Christ. We are all important. If God took the time to make us, that automatically set the bar that we're important. Mm -hmm. We were so important. God said, I think it was a Jeremiah pastor, that God said before he even formed us in our mother's womb, he knew us. Amen. 
So how dare Kiana think that I'm not as important as her, or I think she's not as important as me, or I think First Lady is not as important as me, or First Lady think Mary is not as important as her. You know, Mary think Carol is not as important. We are all important. So, if you hurt someone's feelings, Bible say, if you even think you hurt someone's feelings, the Bible say before you even go to the altar, if you go to the altar and you remember that you got an honor against somebody or, or that somebody has an honor against you, or if you think they got an honor against you, leave your gift at the altar. No, we're going to bother praying. Go get it right with that person. The Bible say, I think in Proverbs or Psalm, go make sure thy brother. Go make sure. If I even think I fit the James, I might not be certain, but if I think God compels me to go to James and say, James, I'm just checking, I'm just making sure I said such and such and such, such that I offend you. Like, Sister Terry, what are you talking about? Cool, but I went and made sure of my brother. We're not doing that in our churches these days, Pastor. We're not making sure of our brother. We're, we're not doing that. Now, someone hurt your feelings, okay? Because sometimes people hurt your feelings you didn't even know. You didn't even know that you hurt their feelings, but they hurt. If you can't rise above it, first of all, try to rise, rise above it. Love is not easily offended. Love is not easily provoked. Da, da, da. This and that. After all that, you quote all the scripture and you still hurt. Go to that person. DeMarcus. We were on tour one time and my choir director noticed that we had a lot of discourse in the choir. So Snap. one day he had us go up to the person that we were angry with or that we thought was angry with us and discuss it. Bye and bye a lot bye. of the times the people Help. didn't even know there was bye an bye. issue. Bye bye. I didn't know you were mad at me. Yeah. I was. <laughs> and it, it really helped us come together as a choir, bye as bye. a family, bye. as a union, exactly. and we were able to minister throughout the tour and get along with each other. Are you able to get a hold to that choir director that did that? I mean, yeah, yeah. let's <laughs> applaud for that <laughs> choir director. Because that is healthy. That's what I'm talking about. And DeMarcus, we don't do enough of that. I'll be sitting up here and have an audit against you for 15 years. You done had kids, grandkids, not even knowing. You're having a good time. You know, I forgot. And I'm up here, and you be like, oh, Sister Terry, it wasn't even like, I didn't see you. I may have looked your way, but I didn't even see you. This is what we need to do, Pastor. We want to be a healthy church. <laughs> If we got to all against one another, we need to go to one another. Now, if we can rise above it, rise above it. But if we can't, I'm still looking at you out the side of my neck, or I can't even look at you at all. Okay, that, that tells me, Terry, something is still in your heart. You're going to have to make it right. We have to humble ourselves. I have to go make it right with Kiana because I can't look at her. You know, I'm, I'm like this. I'm looking at Mary's knee. Now, what's so interesting about her knee? What's so interesting about her knee? It's a knee. It's a knee. But I can't look at you. So that means something's in my heart. I can't look. I can't look at you. Okay, we got to do what the scriptures say and go to that person. Not send out a dissertation to the entire church. Mm -hmm. Not call Eleven Alive News and <laughs> get on the phone and call. Do you know what sister so and so said to me? Do you know what brother so and so had the nerve, had the audacity to say to me? Another way to make sure that we remain a healthy church and be a healthy church. You can't feel superior to people. Mm. There are no big eyes or little U's. And for those that might feel that you're better than someone else, I'm, I'm talking to you about TV land because ain't nobody here that think they're better than anybody. Amen. 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 So for those of you out there that might just feel that because you're related to the bishop or you are the bishop, or, you know, you, you got Obama on speed now, and, you know, you got a couple of mansions, and, you know, you got servants that work for your servants, and all that's fine. I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater by any means. You got 15 churches or whatever. We're happy for you. I'm happy for you. Hey, the more souls to reach, the better. However, don't get it twisted, baby. Go to Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, where it will remind you to not think more of yourself than you ought. Mm -hmm. We cannot think more of ourselves than we ought to. Don't care who you are. Don't care what your title. From the bishop to the door, mm -hmm. we're all important in Christ. 
who are all important in Christ. So this is another way to stay healthy, have a healthy church. Know that you want to be the brother of low degree who rejoice in that he's exalted. Now, it might be the other end of the spectrum. You got folks that feel inferior to everyone else. Mm. Baby, that's not right either. Amen. All you got to do is go to Psalms chapter 139, verse 14, where the Bible tells you that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you go further in the scripture, you can go all the way to Acts chapter 10, verse 34, where God reminds you that he has no respect to a person. So, Pastor, what I'm finding is we got to agree with what God says about us. Don't walk around with your head hung down. I'm nobody because I don't direct the choir, because I don't preach, or because I don't pastor, or because I don't teach. Or all I do is pick up the lid off the floor. All I do is sing. Or all I do is... There is no such thing as all you do. We do all things to the glory of God. Amen. All things. I don't care if the only work you do, the only thing you were called to do is to pick the lid up right in this middle aisle. Do it with a great attitude to the glory of God. Amen. And, and Pastor, what would God say? Well done. Well done. Amen. 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 So we don't need, amen? So we don't need to walk around feeling inferior to one another. We don't need to do that. Because that also, Pastor, produces jealousy. Maybe God didn't call you to sing like that. So don't be jealous of the one that can sing. I'm a, I can sing, but I am not a soloist at all. So you know what I do? I call on people who are. <laughs> <laughs> right, Pastor? I call on people who are, Jackie. Do I need to feel inferior to them? No. We all got our part in the body of Christ. I don't care if I'm just the elbow. I'm going to be the best dog on elbow I can be in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So... And helping your church to be a healthy church, first of all, be healthy yourself. And I got to, and, 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 and we're almost done. I want to wrap this up, but I, I got to use Jackie as an example. Let me give y'all an example of a healthy situation. Amen. But let me show you how this really could have went a whole nother way, which is the way, Pastor, it usually go in our churches. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, now y'all know.